This podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I am not a doctor or registered nutritionist, and I do not provide medical advice. You are advised to do your own research and make decisions in partnership with your healthcare provider. If you're pregnant, nursing, have a medical condition, or are taking any medication, please consult your physician and do not go off any medication without consulting with your healthcare provider. Nothing in this podcast should be relied upon to determine dietary changes, a medical diagnosis, or course of treatment. Welcome to the Slightly Greener Life podcast. This is your host, Tanya Harris. I am an award-winning environmental toxin expert, best-selling author, and mother of three. I created this podcast as a place to help busy moms ditch the overwhelm and start living a low toxin life. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hi there and welcome back. We're officially in season two of the Slightly Greener Life. I took a much needed month off of the show to spend time with family before everything gets crazy in the fall again. And now, especially because my kids are all adults, it's just getting harder and harder to spend time with all three of them. So I decided I have to snag time with them when I can. But I am so excited to be back for season two of the podcast. We've got some great guest interviews coming up. And I also have a couple of other topics in the works that I am so excited about. And I think you will be too. So be sure to stay tuned. But back to today's episode, today's topic is all about safer cell phone use. So before you hit stop on this episode thinking that I'm going to tell you to stop using your cell phone, I'm definitely not going to do that. I love my cell phone, and I have always loved my kids having a cell phone. Well, most of the time anyway, I did. But living a safer and lower toxin lifestyle isn't about deprivation. It's really about finding safer solutions that fit into our lifestyle. So in this episode, I'm not going to tell you to ditch the cell phone and go back to a landline. I'm just going to give you some simple tips on how to use cell phones in a safer way that helps reduce exposure to cell phone radiation. Kids are definitely getting their cell phones a lot earlier than we ever did. I think I was like 25 when I first got my first cell phone. So they really have a lot longer exposure time than we have as adults. And one study I read said that 42% of kids have a phone by age 10. By age 12, it's 71% of kids. And by 14, 91% of kids have a cell phone. Although cell phone and tablet use often comes way before that because a lot of times it's common for toddlers and preschoolers to use these devices for games and videos. But the problem is that we really don't know what the long-term effects are going to be yet, especially when they start out getting their phones so young. So we should be reducing their exposure to cell phone radiation as early as possible. And just like so many of the toxic chemicals in our homes, children are more susceptible than adults to the potential health effects of cell phone radiation. And the National Cancer Institute believes that the effects of cell phone radiation should be studied on children separately because their brains are more absorbent than ours are. So it's very easy for that radiation to get absorbed into their brains. And the other thing is that they have thinner skulls than we do, which also makes it easier for the radiation to get absorbed into the brain. A study on cell phones from as early as 2008 found that frequent cell phone use, especially on the side of the head most commonly used, may be linked to tumors in the salivary gland. And the study discovered that people who use their cell phones heavily on that side of the head have about a 50% higher chance of getting a tumor in the main salivary gland, which is called the parotid gland. The risk was compared to people who don't use cell phones much or didn't use that side of the head. So it's really important to be aware of this potential risk. But again, more research is needed to fully understand how cell phones might be related to these tumors. But again, it's always a good idea to use your phone wisely and take some of these precautions I'm about to talk about. The scientist who had conducted this 2008 study predicts that over time, the greatest effects will be seen in heavy cell phone users and in children. What I also found interesting was that the study also found an increased risk of cancer for heavy cell phone users who lived in remote areas. And that's because fewer antennas in the area mean that the cell phones need to emit more radiation in order to get that signal and to communicate effectively. So if you live in a more rural area, you'll definitely wanna follow the safety tips I'll be talking about in just a minute. And if you're pregnant, you're also going to wanna make sure to follow these tips because a woman's cell phone use during pregnancy has been shown to be associated with an increased risk for behavioral problems in their children, especially problems with hyperactivity and inattention. And that's not the only study linking cell phone use and ADHD type symptoms. 
because researchers in California conducted a study to understand how using digital media platforms like social media, online shopping, playing games online and streaming movies and texting affected high school students who don't have ADHD. They followed more than 2,500 students ages 15 and 16 over two years and asked them about their digital media use and checked for signs of ADHD. And what they found was at the end of the study, those who use digital media most frequently seem to increase the risk of having ADHD symptoms by about 10%. And boys were more likely to be affected than girls. And students who had depression or a history of getting into trouble were also at a higher risk. So having symptoms of ADHD doesn't actually mean they have ADHD necessarily, but having the symptoms of it can still uh, have a, an effect on daily life and in school. So using these devices, especially in childhood, can have negative health and behavior consequences. And again, we really don't know the long-term health effects yet, especially in children who will have a much longer time of exposure. And then there's the issue of sleep. So we know that a lack of sleep can cause problems, and I'm sure you've also heard that it's important to stop using electronics in the couple of hours before bedtime. And that's because our cell phones and our computers and tablets and TVs can emit a blue light, which imitates daylight. So that throws off our circadian rhythms. Exposure to this blue light can suppress melatonin, which is the hormone responsible for our sleep-wake cycle. And melatonin levels start to rise in the evening which really helps your body to know that it's time to go to sleep. And then the levels begin to drop in the morning as it becomes time to wake up. But when this blue light suppresses melatonin, especially at night, it can be hard to get to sleep and stay asleep, which I'm sure we've all experienced. I know I sure do, which can cause all sorts of health issues in the body when you're not getting enough good quality sleep. So things like a suppressed immune system, and it can contribute to things like weight gain and memory problems. And then over time, it can cause other serious issues such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes and even cancer. So it can contribute to so many different things. So although the jury is still out in some studies about the health effects of cell phone radiation, there are still many studies that do show the potential for health effects. And then others mention that more research is needed. So I always like to err on the side of caution. So if some studies are finding links to harmful health effects, I'll do what I can to minimize my exposure as well as my family's. And these tips are really easy to follow, so why not do it? So with all that being said, let's dig into some simple steps that you can take to reduce your exposure to cell phone radiation. The first one is don't physically carry the phone on you. When you carry your cell phone on you, like in a bra or a pocket, the phone is emitting radiation to that area of your body. So instead, carry your cell phone in a purse or a backpack as often as you can and also encourage your kids to do the same. And if you have to carry your cell phone on you, make sure it's on airplane mode, which stops the phone from receiving a signal or from emitting that radiation. Also, make sure to check that the Wi-Fi signal is also off because on some cell phone settings, the Wi-Fi stays on even when it's in airplane mode, which will still emit some radiation. The second tip is use the phone only when it has a full signal. The fewer the bars it has, the more radiation is emitted because the phone is working harder to get a signal. Also, avoid making calls in cars, elevators, trains, and buses, which that kind of surprised me too. I just learned that because the cell phone works harder to get a signal through metal. So the power level increases and so does the radiation. Number three is use the phone only for essential calls or shorter calls and text whenever possible. But if you do have to use the phone, the FDA suggests holding the phone away from your ear as often as you can, at least a half inch away from your ear, but ideally one to two inches away from your body. The next tip, number four, is use speakerphone if you can or use headphones so you can keep more distance between the phone and your head. Or better yet, use the cell phone only for essential or shorter calls. And again, text when, when, whenever possible. So speaking of headphones, when it comes to choosing headphones, my choice is they're called air tube headphones after doing a lot of research. Instead of using earbuds that use Bluetooth, which while it doesn't produce as much radiation, Bluetooth is still emitting some in an area that is so close to the brain, and some studies have shown a possible link to brain cancer and Bluetooth earbuds. And then wired headsets aren't a whole lot better. They can also emit EMF radiation that can travel through the wires to your ears. So although, again, some of these studies are inconclusive, some do show a link, so I like to err on the side of caution. And I know that earbuds are so handy. I really like them. So I, I do have a pair, I will say, but I don't use them very often. 
only for short things. Most part, I use the AirTube headphones. So the safest option I have found and have started using are those AirTube headphones, which instead of being com a completely wired headset that can emit harmful EMFs to your head through the wire, these headphones have a hollow air tube towards the top that replaces part of the wire. So the ones that I personally use are Defender Shields air tube headphones. They're a little pricey, but again, the price of safety, and I think they work really well. So I'll link to these on the episode's webpage at slightlygreener.com slash episode 17. And this is not an affiliate or a sponsored link. It's just a product that I personally use and trust after doing the research. So tip number five. Instead of streaming, download TV shows and movies to watch offline and watch them on airplane mode to cut down on the amount of radiation emitted. This will help a lot too, especially if you have young kids and they want to watch movies. Download them first and let them watch them on airplane mode. Number six is to sleep with the phone on airplane mode. So many of us use the phones as alarm clocks and sleep with it close to our heads, but keep it on airplane mode at night to prevent radiation exposure while you sleep. That's really important. And it's so convenient to just kind of look at your phone before bed and put it on your nightstand or next to your pillow and go to sleep because your alarm is set on it. But that's radiation to your head or whatever body part it's near all night long. So if you can't have it on airplane mode, because I sure don't until all my kids are home safe, sleep with it at least three feet away from where you're sleeping. That way, if it is still emitting that signal, it's far enough away from your body. Three feet away seems to be the general consensus I've seen from all the studies I've looked at. But if you can have it off or on airplane mode, that's the best route possible. Number seven, this is our last tip, is use settings on your cell phone, such as night shift on the iPhone or night mode or dark mode on Android to block the blue light in the evenings. So again, remember that this blue light mimics daylight, which can confuse our body's natural circadian rhythm. So these are apps or settings that turn that blue light into a warmer orange-red color to block out that blue light that can affect sleep. You can also do something similar with your computer with apps such as F, as in Frank, F.Lux, L-U-X, or Night Shift in the settings of your Apple computer. And again, I'll link to these in the show notes. So there you have it. The lowdown on why we should take a moment to rethink our smartphone habits for ourselves and our little ones. So sure, staying connected is great, but we can't forget to balance it out with a little dose of caution. And again, these steps are so simple that why not try them? We don't have to ditch our devices entirely because let's be realistic, who could do that? Definitely not me. <laughs> but taking simple steps like using speakerphone, keeping phones away from our bodies, or encouraging our kids to take breaks from screens or watching things on airplane mode can really make a difference. So that's it for now. I hope you found these tips helpful. And as always, if you'd like to download these tips, you can find them on my website at slightlygreener.com slash episode 17. And if you'd like to connect with other listeners of the show, I hope you'll join my free Facebook community where you can get tips and advice from me and others on this same low toxin lifestyle journey. You can request to join the Slightly Greener community at the link in the show notes. See you next week. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Slightly Greener Life podcast please take a moment to subscribe to the show and then be sure to share it with a friend who you know wants simple steps to living in this complex world. I'll see you next time.